masters in Christ. Uh, this is the first uh, Agai virtual enrichment program that the Navi Mumbai Alumni Association is holding. And uh, at the outset, I welcome all of you and I wish you a very happy and meaningful New Year 2021. Uh, myself, Anil Matthew, I'm the treasurer of the Navi Mumbai Agai Alumni Association. And uh, uh, it's a pleasure uh, today to be with all of you uh, in this new year. And uh, it gives me immense pleasure to also have uh, Brother Alford in our midst. Uh, uh, in 2015, we spent one month together in Maui. That is the first time I met him. Uh, we met uh, each other in Maui. And uh, ever since uh, we, uh, we have been keeping a very good uh, relationship uh, as Christian brothers. And uh, uh, Brother Alfred uh, has uh, a connection with Navi Mumbai because his uh, uh, wife is from Navi Mumbai. So that may be a surprise to many of you. Anyway, <laughs> uh, he will be fittingly welcomed uh, before, the, before he delivers the message. Now let us uh, come together. I commit the entire program uh, into God's presence and I welcome Brother Murli uh, mm. uh, to open this meeting with the word of prayer. Good evening to all of us and uh, lovely to be here. Uh, shall we uh, commit ourselves uh, to the Lord before we uh, get to closer to getting to know from the speaker that is uh, chosen today. Uh, Father, uh, we just come to your presence uh, this evening time. Uh, we are so, so busy and overawed and engaged with so many things in this world, Lord. But right now, God, uh, give us this focused attention to listen to your voice and uh, bless the speaker who is uh, right now here with us, Lord. Father, that uh, you will um, be make, make us sensitive to your voice and that we may be sensitive to your calling, that we may be endowed with the power of the Holy Spirit. We cannot do anything by our strength, oh Father. We need the unction of the power of the Holy Spirit this evening, Father. Thank you for all the efforts that is happening, oh God, in Agai um, Ministries here in Navi Mumbai, Father, that you would uh, use us for your glory. We, uh, we commit each one of us into thy hands, Father. Be with us, lead us, oh God, step by step, oh God, until everything happens, oh God, that Iron sharpens iron that we will get to know one another uh, by getting to know each other much better, oh Father. We need your strength, Father. We give you glory. We give you honor, Father. You take control of every situation, Master. Speak to our hearts. For in Jesus' name we uh, pray, we ask, and we receive it, oh Father. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Murli. Uh, now we will go into a time of worship. Uh, over to Brother Isaac. I'm just going to play a video and uh, this is a video which will really challenge us and also at the same time point to the great God which whom we are serving. So let us watch this. you come 
Thank you, Brother Isaac, uh, mm -hmm. for that uh, beautiful worship melody, uh, the testimony of uh, Jim Elliot. Uh, now, to give an introduction about the Haggai ministry, I call upon Brother Rajan Matthew uh, from our Mumbai Alumni Association. Brother, over to Brother Rajan Matthew. Do we have the screen sharing, brother? Yes, you can, brother. Whenever we come to there, it's good to remember God's mercy upon the day ministry, Haggai issue. He spread over 189 countries in the world, and uh, over the last 50 years has trained more than 1,23,000 leaders. Uh, to begin with, uh, Haggai India uh, is uh, uh, the only objective of Haggai Institute, Haggai India or Haggai International, is to train leaders for gospel. For, let's look at uh, the, the great vision. Uh, it started with the vision God gave to John Edmund Haggai, who passed away recently at the age of 96. Uh, he's a wonderful man of God. He has written many books and a very godly person. He was a pastor and God called him to this ministry of training leaders to equip others for the work of evangelism. So the vision of the HI is to help ensure that the gospel is presented in the power of the Holy Spirit with cultural relevance and sensitivity to all peoples, especially in the unreached parts of India so that India will be transformed. This is our Agai India. And we praise God how when we, when we go forward, in this vision statement, there are two, three things. The gospel is presented. What we preach is gospel. And it is only preached by the power of the Holy Spirit. And uh, we know our nation is uh, diverse, different people of languages and different cultures, North, South, East and West and all that. So there is a need of cultural relevance. Whenever we reach the people, with the gospel of Jesus Christ, it has to be having a cultural relevance so that they will find it acceptable and with sensitivity. Uh, when we present it, it should be so beautiful that they, we are not here to hurt sentiments of people, but to present the gospel and especially in the unreached parts of India so that India will be transformed. That is the sole objective of the vision of HI. As we go forward, we thank God for this, uh, this vision, what God has given and how God has helped us to carry, carry it forward. And, uh, you know, HI is an alumni driven organization. Uh, the, there is uh, the leaders who trained, equip others are themselves alumni. So gospel is a core message of HI. And we do it with the power of the Holy Spirit so that the nation will be transformed. So we have missionaries, we have clergy, lay leaders who are trained uh, in this uh, ministry. Cultural relevance is very important, as I said. Also, as we go forward, we know we have to be sensitive. Uh, we have to be sensitive also because uh, people will not may not accept immediately. We need to present it so beautifully uh, and reach parts of India. So India will be transformed. This is the, this is the main uh, focus of uh, this one. And uh, for that, we advance the skills of qualified Christian leaders. We are not 
creating leaders, but we are engaging leaders who are already strategically positioned, influential leaders, so that so that they'll be a better equipped to effectively evangelize our own people in India and train others to do the same. When they are skilled better, they will train others to do the same to, so that more and more leaders will be engaged in this task of uh, reaching the gospel. And uh, we have more than 60,000 alumni and uh, more than 150 seminars in association. They are run by, as I said, uh, we have different regions, alumni associations, which they plan, they coordinate the programs, and we have faculties who help out. We have a national office in Hyderabad, and we also uh, have different regions uh, as the HA office is divided into different zones too. Uh, we have seminars, uh, three-day seminars, five-day seminars. Five days are residential seminars to so more, more of interaction time that is available and uh, more of subjects. And we have core subjects like most importantly, biblical mandate. What is the word of God telling about, you know, the, the, the commission, great commission, who Christ is, and also the integrity, the leadership, all these are core subjects. And we have three-day seminar where it is non-residential, where people can go home and come back, but there are the, the topics are so much well laid out that we have uh, uh, people who will be trained and be inspired, will be inspired. All the HI can have, have a great assurance in their heart and have that they are better equipped, motivated, challenged to be involved in this task of equipping others for the gospel. And we have faculty de development seminar where we alumni come together and they are trained as faculty. And these are some of the pictures and there are a lot of seminars, very few pictures are available here. So, and I praise God for, uh, you know, engaging a lot of churches. It's interdenominational. Uh, we arrive from Catholic churches and independent churches and traditional churches. And uh, lots and lots of people are trained as alumni. And we praise God for the past so many years uh, in all over the world. HI is doing a good work, especially in we praise for our country. And we have a population of 1.30 billion. It is slightly more now because this is a little old. And uh, we have a great task before us, a great population who do not know Jesus Christ as their personal savior. So we have a great task before us and uh, gospel saves, gospel saves. And the love, as Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5.14, love of Christ compels me. He was a man who was driven to this work of evangelism when he met Jesus Christ, encountered on the way to Damascus. And his life changed. And he says, the love of Christ compels me for this work. And uh, we, 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 we have a God who has given us this commission. I read the second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9, which says, So we make it our goal to please him, whether we are at home in the body or away from him. Our motive is to please God. How can we please God? To bear fruit by reaching out to others with the gospel of Christ. That's the great commission. And we have we know very clearly people have to reach with the gospel. Because Jesus spoke about the punishment and judgment to hell. So let's always remember that the people who are perishing to be reached with the love of Christ. And uh, the motivation is, you know, the, when uh, Paul wrote to Philemon, I pray that you may be active in sharing your faith so that you will have a full understanding of every good thing we have in Christ. So let's be active in sharing this faith. And... Uh, as we know how Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 5.17, when we are in Christ, we are a new creation. So 
faith when gospel is preached the faith comes from hearing and the message how can we be involved let's pray for the ministry ministry that is spread over 189 countries lord help us to be more effective help us to be more involved so let's pray and be involved as the, at the local alumni association level finding out ways to engage others and recruit participants for area national and sls seminars so that we'll have more seminars and more people will be equipped and promote the ministry in the local churches churches are involved we are not working apart from the churches but with the churches we have even seminars held in churches as a, when the region when the churches need to have a seminar so that's how and also we can invest with us uh, with with the hi financially there are needs even uh, in the finance in the area of finance so may god help us to you know reach reach the uh, gospel of you know with the uh, let's let's uh, pray to god god help us to you know reach this with the power of the holy spirit and may god help us let let this be our prayer let this be our prayer lord make us effective a lot of lot to be done time is short god wants us to be passionate god wants us to be effective god wants us to be working and god wants us to be praying the great commission let's never forget so first concern may god bless us thank you thank you so much uh, uh, brother rajan matthew for that uh, concise uh, report about the ministry of aga in india uh, now uh, it is a, it is a time to listen to our speaker brother alfred and uh, uh, i am so happy uh, to be here i welcome I, i request brother isaac emmanuel the president of uh, navi mumbai haga alumni association to introduce our speaker for tonight over to brother isaac thank you brother anil um i know that you may know brother alfred much more than i do but i think uh, uh i was introduced to brother alfred uh, by uh, dr becky i was very keen to find out who are the people who can actually help us uh you know in the in the monthly virtual enrichment seminars which we have been regularly doing since the lockdown and then she suggested uh, brother alfred and she gave very interesting anecdotes about him but what came through to me was here is a great man of god but at the same time a very humble person a very humble person and so um, i said yes i must reach out to him and i must bring him and help the local alumni here in navi mumbai to uh, to experience god at work with brother alfred so i'm very happy to introduce to you a graphic designer a cartoonist a dramatist a script writer even a film maker a photographer a great storyteller and also somebody who develops content for tv radio and social media so we have a very very creative person at the same time he has uh been in the business of taking risks also so he's running a company uh it's called alfred allen advertising the triple a where he has been uh working for the past 25 plus years i believe it was started by his father way back in the 60s so the company itself is about 60 years old and uh it was also wonderful to know that this company is also connected to one of my uncles who was very much working with the company many years ago uh so this is an agency since 1965 uh working purely within christian ethos and uh very creative people whose only goal in life is to please our lord and savior jesus christ and win souls for him and i could really see it even with a couple of people i know who were working in this organization 
The company has won about three national awards from the President of India himself and also international awards, international distinctions for certain creative campaigns and designs. So focus has been to communicate the gospel through audiovisual and performing arts. So uh, we have with us from the professional side that is the introduction and then spiritually we're also happy to say that he is a lifetime Gideon member and also an alumni of the Haggai International which means he was in Maui along with Anil in, in the year 2015. He was saved by the grace of God when at a very young and tender age of 12 and later on he was baptized by immersion. So he fellowships with the Grace Assembly uh, in Delhi, a local brethren assembly. And uh, he is a co-deacon there, uh, also, also very active in soul winning. A youth leader for the past 20 years, Sunday class teacher for the last 30 years. He is married to Sister Rebecca and they are blessed with two beautiful daughters called uh, Ria and Anna. Above all, he is a man of God who is in the marketplace and who is in the business of eternal work to bring souls to Christ. So I'm once again very, very glad to bring uh, the brother Alan to you. And I pray the Lord may anoint him for the ministry right now. So over to you, dear brother. Thank you, uh, brother Isaac. Um, I'm sure uh, the president of America didn't have that introduction <laughs> for, his, for his inauguration and all, but thank you so much for those very gracious words and kind words. And um, thank you My for pleasure. your introduction. And I see a smiling lady smiling back to me. <laughs> and uh, so happy that uh, Sister Rebecca is here also. And uh, great to see Anil also after a long gap. And um, so uh, thank you all. And it's a joy to be here. So uh, I've been asked to share something from God's word and they asked me for a topic. And um, so I thought I will share about the power of the needle. And uh, perhaps uh, you know the story, but perhaps you have missed the needle. So uh, let us just dive into God's word. And let me just take you um, through this uh, amazing miracle that took place. And perhaps this can encourage you all that during the COVID-19 pandemic and all the restrictions that we have, and you can't move around much, you can't travel much. There are so many limitations, uh, but let's see what this uh, particular person did in God's word and how effective she was. Um, I'm just going to give a sort of an introduction and let me see if you can guess who this lady is. Definitely not uh, Dr. Rebecca, there's someone from the Bible mentioned, so <laughs> that's just a clue. Okay, so, I'm going to take you 30 miles west of Jerusalem. There's a small little seaport and join me to that seaport. And um, here is a neighborhood and um, this is a seaport. It has a lot of, uh, you know, export and import. Goods are coming in, goods are going. It's a business hub. And um, our friend Jonah, he took a ship from there and wanted to go to not to Nineveh, but to Tarshish. Can anyone guess what this place is? Anyone? City. Okay, never mind. City of Tyre. Bombay? No, it's not Bombay. City of Tyre. Lydia. Lydia. Uh, 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 brother Rajan, I must congratulate you. You're wrong. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> but you're somewhere there. You're somewhere in the neighborhood. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So let me build the suspense. Okay. And this person was a very popular person. Believe me. And she was known everywhere in that area. And she was a very, very simple person. She perhaps wasn't, wasn't very rich. She didn't have a lot of money, but she was very talented. This particular person. 
and everyone knew about her and she was a very very remarkable person and i want to introduce this person to you in the next few minutes and perhaps that may encourage you even more even more i know there's a very special group here even more during these difficult times to share the love of the lord jesus christ and to present the gospel as you have never done before uh, in many other ways also you know she listened to the cries of the people okay she was extremely compassionate and um, she had the eyes of the lord jesus because the lord saw the multitudes and had compassion on them and um, uh, you know what she loved to give gifts and believe me whenever a sailor came back home after a voyage or after a day's work on the seas and they saw their children wearing new clothes no one had to tell that man from where those clothes came because those new clothes belonged to as gifts given by this lady and she had a great heart for widows and the bible says to visit the widows and the fatherless is true religion she used to love old people and she gave her heart and her time to widows okay and brothers and sisters have you guessed who this person is who lived in jopa tabita that's right and what was she called as dorcas dorcas my mother okay. my mother knows me by the way oh okay that that's important then <laughs> <laughs> okay so that is dorcas my brothers and sisters i like to introduce uh, this wonderful character of the person of dorcas in the next few minutes and perhaps it's a simple story believe me this great miracle that uh, peter did is forgotten you know why because there is thunder and lightning in the opening chapters of uh, acts chapter 9 the man who persecuted the church saul of tarsus that same man on the road to damascus meets the lord jesus christ his life dramatically changes he goes blind his scales fall off and he's able to see and he sees in a different light altogether the man changes the man who persecuted said finally for to me to live is christ is and to die is gain and saul preaches in damascus saul escapes through jerusalem so that whole drama unfolds in chapter 9 of acts it's a brilliant chapter and it's repeated many times in paul's teachings and his witness he mentions about this great incident that changed his destiny and his life paul saul of tarsus becomes paul the great apostle and he goes from place to place sharing the gospel and establishing many churches across asia minor minor in europe but amongst all that happens in chapter 9 brothers and sisters my dear friends we forget how chapter 9 ends and chapter 9 ends with this amazing unknown simple person living in jopa in a small little colony where she made an impact for the lord jesus christ yes paul won many souls for the lord he he established many churches he took the gospel to regions beyond indeed but what about the neighborhood what about charity begins at home and that's what dorcas did brothers and sisters she was a simple lady she never traveled the seas she never took uh, missionary journeys she was a she was not a great orator she was she didn't study at the feet of gamaliel she wasn't the one who could speak many languages she was not the hebrew of the hebrews she was a very simple lady we don't know much about her all we know that she died and i'm taking you to a funeral this evening just to tell you that even a funeral can talk much about a person so let's go to verse 36 of chapter 9 and let us take just a few little points about this amazing person and i'll be as fast as i can okay dorcas is his name is her name d o r c a s i'm sure you said i know that but perhaps you don't know the abbreviation of dorcas so i'm just going to give you six small points and with the help of my needle here 
and just to tell you how this needle transformed a place around Jopa. Okay, so they are just six small points starting with the abbreviation of a name, Dorcas. So please bear with me. We are going to just move ahead. We are in that seaport. The sea breeze is beautiful in the evening. And here we find something that the eternal word of God has mentioned about Dorcas. The first thing, the first thing we read about Dorcas is, by the way, her name means a deer or a gazelle. She was a very graceful lady. In the good old times, people used to identify people by their character. For example, if you're a bold, you know, strong man, like in Punjab, they may, you may look like a lion, you say, oh, Sher Singh, oh, yeah, Sher Singh, Sher Singh. But she was a very, very nice and composed and a very soft person. And they used to call her a deer. She moved around like a deer. She was here and she was there and she was everywhere. And she was dear to everyone. She was a very dear person to everyone. And her name suited her character beautifully. So, as I mentioned, D. What does D stand for in Dorcas? Okay, the first thing, brothers and sisters, when you look at verse 36, the first thing mentioned about this remarkable woman is there was at Jopa a certain, a certain, not woman, a certain disciple. Okay. A lot of times we show our visiting card or mention who we are. But no one knows that we are a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. There was a dear a Brahmin friend who accepted the Lord. He said, I went to a Christian school. I went to a Christian college. I had Christian colleagues at work. But no one ever told me that I am a sinner and I didn't know that they were the true Christians. Friends. When we go to our marketplace, when we go to our business, when we go to our office, do people know that we are disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ or just some, some Christian by name who compromises in everything? Friends, we are called to be disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is the introduction God's Holy Spirit gives about Dorcas. Nothing about us first. The first things first, she was a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord said, go make disciples across the world. Share the good news. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And lo, I am with you always. Disciple. A disciple. Brothers and sisters, the first thing about Dorcas with D is that she was a true disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, we know that uh, Philip the evangelist, he went to Samaria, he went to Judea, and the word of God was preached. And I was reading some commentaries and they said that perhaps Dorcas got saved as we know that how uh, uh, he went sharing the good news in Acts chapter 8 and verse 4. Uh, persecution happened. We all know about that and how the, word, the people went from place to place sharing the gospel and Philip the evangelist preached in Samaria and in Judea and Dorcas received the Lord into her heart. And when she received the Lord in her heart, she started following the Lord. She started imitating the master and she obeyed the Lord Jesus Christ. If, the, if you are a true disciple, the great commission is not an option at all. It is a command of the Lord Jesus Christ. The one who made the heavens and the earth, who came down to save you and me, the king of glory, it's his command. And she, a simple lady, she followed that command in whatever capacity she had. We'll just see that. And she followed, she obeyed, she imitated the Lord. And she was indeed a disciple. The Lord Jesus Christ came first in her life. And that's what is recorded in the word of God. In the King James Version, it's like this, that she, a certain disciple, are we introduced as disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ? I leave that to you. 
Remember what we learned from the needle then with Dorcas. You know what? The needle has no will of its own. Seriously. It's given to the hand of the master and the master uses it. The master G or the master tailor, he uses it just as he wants to use it. He may make a, a, a coat, he may make a shirt, he may make a frock, he may put a button in, whatever he wants to do. This needle is surrendered in the hands of the master. It's a disciple in the hands of the master. And the master does what he wants to do and want to make or to stitch things together. Whatever he wants to do, the needle has no will. A disciple has no will but to follow the master. So brothers and sisters, he has the plan. The Lord has the plan. He has the pattern. He is the master tailor. We just have to be in his hands. And Dorcas was a lady in his hands. Okay, we come to O now. D-O. What does O mean now? Okay, let's look a little further. In the same verse, 36, it says, her name was called Dorcas. A woman was full of good works and alms deeds, which she did. God's word is amazing, I must say. Every word is inspired by God himself and noted down. Okay, not a jot and tittle can be removed. Heaven and earth will remo be removed. The Bible says, the Lord Jesus Christ said, friends, she was full of good works. She was overflowing. O stands for she was overflowing. Her cup was overflowing. David says, my cup overflows. You know, there was an overflow of God's love in her life. She was absolutely a fountain of God's love. You know, she was overflowing and what? Full, not little bit, full. In, in, in Hindi it is, Umar rahi thi wo, Umar rahi. And in Urdu is, wo labrez ho thi. I mean, as if God is pouring out and she's just flowing out. You know, she was, Bible says, full of good works. Brothers and sisters, are we doing any good works? You may, you may say, Brother Alfred, our good works are like filthy rags. That's fine, brothers. We are saved now. You're a child of God. Where are the good works? I know it's difficult to travel from place to place. I know it's a difficult time. Last year has been tough on everyone. But you can do a lot of things, brothers and sisters. You got to be creative like Dorcas of old. She didn't have resources. She had skill and talent that God gave her. And that's what she did. And those good works, she didn't spend a lot of money, but she spent a lot of effort and time. And she was full of them. She was overflowing. Her cup was overflowing. Silver and gold have I none said. But all that I give is in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Rise up and walk. You have that name, brothers and sisters. In that name, you can do a lot of good works. Tremendous works you can do. That name is all powerful. And you can do great wonders in, the, in that wonderful name. You have any talent? There's not a single person who can say, I've got no talent. Dorcas had the talent of stitching. And she was, she used this needle and she made many coats. She made many dresses. Yes, she would have sacrificed her afternoon rest time. She would have sit up late. She would have saved money to buy cloth and, and all the other things. She did that brothers and sisters because she was constrained by the love of Christ. She couldn't preach like Paul. She couldn't travel like Philip the evangelist. She couldn't do great miracles. She couldn't raise the dead like Peter. But she could make dresses. And she did that. She didn't stop there. Her limitations didn't limit her to share the, the good news and to demonstrate it in good works. You know, there was a dear friend in Delhi. He used to pass through the metro station and there used to be a beggar begging and people used to throw money at him. 
like usually people do but one day this this christian brother he stopped and he came down where he was sitting this this poor beggar and he gave him a hug and he gave him some money and this beggar had tears in his eyes he said this is the first time someone has given me a hug he says and then he shared the gospel with him brothers and sisters where is that hug huh where is that embrace where is that going out to yourself you know we say brother i'll pray for you that's great brother and praise praise be to god we do pray but what about faith without works is dead that's what martin luther said too and that's what we read in god's precious word faith without works is dead you have great faith but no works brothers what reward are you going to get i leave that to you she invested in what she had and that's what she did the love of christ constrained her her prayers and uh, were the amens of the work she did she did not do it in words but the bible says in verse 36 it ends which she did we say many things brothers and sisters but do we do it she did it she did it the bible says she did it she was not in word only but in deed she did what she said for the lord jesus christ yes we are all alumni we are all we do our bit we say many things there was one man called robert chapman brothers and sisters a great man of god there was a beautiful book called a brother indeed a very humble man extremely humble person in england you know what he said he said i don't preach sermons i live my sermons i demonstrate it through my life i demonstrate it through my life brothers are we demonstrating the love of christ okay what we learn from the needle very quickly the needle has an eye remember and the master looks through the eye to put the thread in and more close the needle comes to the master's eye his face reflects in the needle the more close you are to the lord you will see through the eye what the master is seeing through the eye and his eye sees a perishing world he sees a world that is perishing and just like jude says we have to pull people from the fire out and william booth of the salvation army said he told his people it is just when you look at any unsaved person just imagine that he is hanging on a thin line over the flames of fire and rescue that man brothers and sisters we need to rescue souls we have no time as brother rightly said we have no time in his presentation we have, we have no time the lord's coming back any moment and he'll take an account look through the eye of the lord jesus christ and you'll understand his compassion and love and we'll focus on others rather than upon ourselves okay very quickly r r stands for okay it's a funeral brothers and sisters i told you and the widows had come the children had come the people had come people were lamenting oh mama dorcas has left us mama dorcas has left us oh dorcas oh dorcas they were weeping and beating their breasts oh they were lamenting there because they loved her and they remembered her r stands for she was remembered she was remembered that made me think brothers and sisters i want you to think what will you be what will you be remembered on your funeral brothers and sisters what will people talk about you how many souls how many spiritual sons and daughters will attend your funeral think about it there were people who loved dorcas so much they brought they wore the clothes and they showed it to peter they sent two people to get peter there they loved her so much they didn't want to leave her 
and they believed if we call peter there may be a chance and they sent and they got peter there and we all know the story the great miracle he did exactly he knelt down sent people out just like the lord rose jarius daughter he had seen it and peter did the same thing as his master did the lord jesus and dorcas came back to life oh the love of the people brothers and sisters what will you be remembered about what will you be remembered about remembered for all your degrees your big houses your cars your bank balance your 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 trophies earthly trophies or your awards or will you have stars in your crown that day when you meet your master okay there was one old uncle used to sing that song old him will there be stars in my crown brothers and sisters what are you going to be remembered about there was an old auntie who died one brother told me that people came to him he didn't know he said your mother helped us she gave me this money she helped my children she did this she gave us this he was amazed i didn't know when my mother did all that many people come to me after my father passed away and saying he did this he did that i didn't know about that the bible says brothers and sisters revelation 14 13 you rest from your labors and their deeds will follow them uh, edmund hagai is still remembered dr billy graham is still remembered god's people are still remembered what will you be remembered about think about it what's going to be told on your funeral and what people will remember after you pass away one day the journey will end she had a big family yes she did she had many spiritual children dorcas we don't know about her husband and children whether she was married i don't know but she had many spiritual people many widows were there she impacted the lives of these widows and she had compassion and love she cared for them and she left a mark you know what is that mark she made her clothes with a brand name called yeshua and the bible says we need to put on christ i'm not saying the lord jesus is a brand please don't misunderstand me what i'm saying is she presented the lord jesus through her clothes and she covered the affliction and the sorrow and all that was she covered it up with her clothes and she embraced them in the love of christ when she gave these gifts and these dresses to them oh what an impact dorcas had on the lives of these people and what do we remember by the needle now remember my dear friends the garments are remembered but the needle is not remembered remember we do our bit and the glory goes to god okay who talks about the needle that made a beautiful coat or a dress no one it talks about the designer the fashion designer the master who made it so whatever we do all glory has to go to the lord jesus christ we are just a needle in the hands of the almighty god john the baptist said he must increase and i must decrease and all glory should go to god and christ has to be remembered see very quickly see c is christ likeness she had christ likeness in her life you know as uh, there's a dear old uncle in bombay uh, his name is uncle sam kumar and i was told recently in his area where he where he moves around in the locality in i don't know which area he lives in but everyone all the children all the people call him a uh, papa yeshu aa gaya papa yeshu aa gaya papa yeshu aa gaya they identify him with the lord jesus christ it's amazing they say papa yeshu has come the children all run after him and his whole house is full of activities for children books and all that he's given his life to win souls for children this old uncle what an amazing person when people call papa yeshu has come i was very touched that he represents and imitates christ in such a way and and um, dorcas was one such she 
was the uninvited guest like the lord jesus in zacchaeus home in many widows home she was the good samaritan giving her coats to the wounded and to the lonely she was the good shepherd seeking out the children and giving them dresses and bringing them she was the one who saw everyone as the pearl of great price like the lord jesus she was the one who always embraced people like the the father of the prodigal and she was the one always giving living waters to those who thirst and she was the one always looking out for those who needed the lord jesus so people saw the lord in her life and we thank the lord for such a wonderful example that the lord gave and uh, and christ likeness i remember my father telling me an incident that uh, sadhu sundar singh we all know about him he was in england and one day uh, some britishers one family called him home and called him home for a meal or a meeting we don't know and this was a big huge mansion and sadhu sundar singh an ordinary man wearing a a choga like that with a beard and a turban he knocked at the door of that house one evening and the maid servant just like rhoda in, in the book of acts she looked through the the uh, view finder of the door and she saw this man and she immediately closed it and ran back and told to the uh, owner of the house that jesus is knocking at the door jesus is knocking at the door and then people came out and saw it was sadhu sundar singh sadhu sundar singh carried the presence of the lord his face used to shine because he used to spend time with the lord are we christ like do people say that we are his sons and daughters do we love like him do we forgive like him and do we have the 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 great concern to win souls she was just like our lord jesus christ and uh, we come to a very quickly my time is running away and uh, and a means affections her affections for the lord brothers and sisters if you do not love the lord you cannot love others impossible because we don't have love of our own we don't have love of our own you know she loved the lord so much that she was constrained by the love of christ as brother mentioned in his presentation she was constrained by the love of christ to love others in second corinthians 5:14 we are constrained paul says we are constrained hum majboor hain the urdu word is majboor we cannot but help love others because he told us and how will people know we are his disciples when we love one another we read in john that's exactly what they she did she showed whatever little talent she had she made dresses and impacted the lives of people brothers and sisters and she showed the love of christ she demonstrated the love of christ and we know that people were weeping for her and what a great thing the lord did and what a great thing the lord did and remember the master always gets the credit not the needle as i told you and she brought credit to the lord glory to the lord the psalmist says not unto us o lord but unto thy name be glory and lastly brothers and sisters s of dorcas is a very interesting word we go right down we all know in verse 40 peter by the power of the lord jesus christ by god he raises her up dorcas gets a second chance to live wow amazing and you know what happens the first thing she sees is peter and what is her reaction she does a uh, oh, i had a long sleep i need some time i need to take rest i need some rest no brothers and sisters no you know what she did in verse 40 she sat up sat up to do what and obviously peter presented her alive ephesians chapter 2 says we were dead in our trespasses and sins and he has quickened us 
and made us alive. We were dead people. We were nobodies. And he has saved us. Sit up. Don't wait. Don't wait for things to get better. Things perhaps may get worse this year. We don't know. God forbid. But sit up. Arise and shine, says Isaiah. Arise and shine. And Dorcas sat up, brothers and sisters. She got a second chance to show the love of Christ. And believe me, it's not written here, but it's written here. You know what happened towards the end? And many believed in the Lord Jesus. Oh, what an impact she had. A great miracle, yes, no doubt. But she would have done many, many fold, not many fold, many fold efforts to share what God has done to a dead woman, to bring her back to life, to live for her. She sat up. You know what? Peter's mother-in-law, she had great fever, the Bible says in Luke chapter 4. And the Lord raised her up. And the Bible says instantly she started ministering to them. Instantly. She didn't wait. Brothers and sisters, sit up. Whatever has happened in 2020, forget it. Sit up. Arise. Serve him in whatever talent God has given. There was a boy. I'm showing you some of my mother's cards just to show you. But you know what? There was a Japanese boy who said, who had a dream to give, send one million Bibles to China in Chinese. People used to laugh at him. They said he's a fool. He sold newspapers. He sold, he used to paint cards like this. He painted greeting cards, sold it on the traffic lights and all around in the public areas in, in Japan. And it took him several years, but he collected one million dollars and he sent those Bibles there. It took him a long time, but he did it. How did he do it? He painted uh, cards. Can you paint a card? Yes. You're going to put it on the wall. He was selling it to get Bibles and God helped him. My mother, she was a great artist. You know, she made this book you know, she was an elderly person in her 70s. She couldn't go around. But she made these picture Bible books, which are now in many languages. Evangelists are taking to the unreached people groups where you can't even use internet. There's no connection in the tribal areas. They can't read. They show these pictures. They show these pictures and they share the gospel. She was an ordinary lady. She made 150 biblical paintings. She took two, three years to do it. She did it. She's dead and gone. But her works are there. Her works followed. Dorcas had died, but those dresses were there, brothers and sisters. Okay? Friends, friends, this is what we have to do. Whatever God has given you, whatever God has placed in you, be ready like the needle. Be available. And the master will use you. He doesn't look at your ability, but at your availability. And he can do wonders for you. Wonders. Jopa, that small little area, was transformed with that simple, I don't know whether she was an old lady or not, I don't know, that simple lady. And God gave her a second chance to live. Brothers and sisters, we have got a second chance to live. We were dead in our sins. He has quickened us, made us alive, saved by grace. Let us go out and share the good news. Brothers and sisters, D, be a true disciple, not in name only, but a true disciple like, and maybe even known as a disciple first. And oh, let us be overflowing with the love of Christ and by sharing the gospel and doing good works. His name's sake. Use every talent God has given you. Be overflowing with it, whatever God. And be remembered. And, and you will be remembered. And God will bless the, the labor of love. And, and you leave a testimony behind. And see, be Christ-like. Live out your sermons. Be like him. And A, have affections. Love the Lord so that you can love one another. And, and the love of Christ may constrain you to share the gospel and sit up. Don't be relaxed. Sit up. Serve him 
and live for him and my father was saved from the road side and um, since then he was fished in in bombay and uh, and he always opened his house and wherever we ever lived every sunday evening we get people into our house we couldn't do it last year because of the pandemic but for since the time i i remember when i came into this world and i started understanding things i used to see every sunday people coming from the road side and we still do it in our house we get strangers from the road and we share the gospel we tell them about the lord jesus many raise their hands we'll only know in heaven they're all strangers who walk in we give tracks on the road side and every sunday we call them home sometimes two people sometimes 20 sometimes 30 sometimes 10 we don't know it is that name of the lord that draws people to himself and uh, so i encourage all of you whatever you have in your hand even just a needle like dorcas even just a needle do it live out sit up and do great things for the lord god bless you all thank you so much thank you so much uh, brother alfred for that power packed uh, and uh, quite a unique message uh, a character which most of the time we don't meditate upon uh, through the life of dorcas uh, you have enriched all of us and encouraged and also challenged us to reach out to the unreached and uh, now it is uh, time uh, for the participants to uh, uh, share your thoughts your questions and interact with uh, brother alfred so let us use next uh, 15 minutes for uh, interacting uh, with uh, brother alfred so come on let us not waste time one by one you can raise your questions unmute yourself and please ask your questions or share your suggestions how was the experience how was the uh, seminar uh, you can share go ahead can i share something about alfred that he did not share uh, i met him in delhi and i thought being a big business person he'll come with a posh car but he picked me up from the ywca and in the boot of his car which i was overflowing was a whole lot of cardboard boxes i didn't know what he was doing when i reached his home and talking to his wife i realized that when he said that he brought that his house had people every sunday what he didn't share was many of the people who were sitting on the side of the road were cripples and alfred would pick them up on his shoulder and he would bring them to the house and after the meeting he would carry them back and place them wherever he picked them up from every day on the way to work he would he would stop in front of these big consular consulate homes where there's a sentry box he would stop his car give the tracks and say you know you must be so bored read this and a couple of days later he would go in again and say did you read it he'd give the man a hug and keep going this is alfred and this is for me when he shares dorcas he is sharing his life and i'm so thankful that i know this man because this is what we need to be today thank you thank you dr becky thank you so much um uh with alfred and also thank you dr becky um and it was a revelation about dawr darkus uh i have one question which has been bothering me for some time but of course now maybe it's not so much bothering me but the question is how can a christian a good christian work in the advertising field because the advertising field has so many uh you know different attractions or distractions and and maybe you have to do a lot of things which may not be really <laughs> you know so so this is this is a question which 
has been bothering quite a few people. So, Brother Alfred, what is your take on that? Okay, um, uh, Brother, the Bible says that we are in this world but not of this world. So, we ran our agency on Christian convictions. We never advertised for liquor, for cigarettes, for uh, things that related to sex, violence, or uh, we never promoted Bollywood films. We promoted Christian films. So anything that clashed with our Christian conviction, we said no. You know. So my father taught us that we don't do business for the sake of business. Our business is to share the gospel. We and this was basically a tent-making work of ours. because we didn't want to ask money for any, from anyone like paul we want to work from our with our own hands uh, if dorcas can stitch we can draw and we can paint we can design we can make create things god gave us that special grace to do that by his grace and we did that it is a tent making we never there to build big uh, offices or big branches and uh, uh, big uh, you know bank balance Uh, we were there just to communicate the gospel through audio visual my father went i think in 1974 to lausanne to at attend the congress of world uh, evangelization of dr billy graham and there he met a lot of people who were filmmakers and he came back with a vision that let me because if you have to reach india there are only two things that can reach india one is cricket and the other is bollywood films you don't need to research you don't need to spend money on research Uh, whether it be mr ambani or poor mohan lal the beggar near uh, india gate or gateway of india they all will watch a movie and they'll all enjoy seeing a cricket match we can't play cricket but we have the greatest story that will uh, even outlast eternity and that is the gospel you know it's the greatest life giving story and why not we tell them like the lord gave parables so that's what we did brother we did not um, associate ourselves with a lot of advertising associations uh, we avoided a lot of these parties because if you if you attend a party you are reduced to the corner with an orange juice in your hand and it was very uncomfortable so uh, we led our agency on christian convictions and the, and if you honor the lord my father taught me this if you honor god god will honor you period and he did that we have been there for 60 years and god has been faithful to us if we remain faithful he will be faithful to us for sure i hope Amen. i answer your question It's thank difficult. you thank you yeah. thank you so much uh but that draws me to another question like how is the gospel film uh let's say it was an industry or a, or ministry in india uh, in terms of the local indians creating films appropriately for the indians uh brother a lot of young talent has come in and your digital media social media has opened up many avenues your mobile phone has made it much easier for people to shoot video and uh, you have many free softwares to edit my daughter edits now which it was a rare thing for someone to edit film you know oh i'm an editor you had to have big machines at that time but uh, but still the idea reigns you have to spend time and ask god for ideas so uh, the main problem is uh, making short film content is easy but to make feature length content is tough not because of uh, there's no talent or ideas or scripts but resources it's very expensive to make so that's why uh, in today's time and age they say uh, when you are flipping your phone if on social media facebook uh, there was a research which said if your post is attractive enough people just spend 3 seconds 3 seconds that's all so you have 3 seconds to capture the imagination of anybody in today's media only 3 seconds and people don't have time to watch large format now hour 1 hour 2 hour at at leisure you watch but there is no time for that people like short so short content is the answer for our times and very powerful short content well made films are important you can do a lot of things with your phone but that won't be cutting edge it won't be professional you still need to learn software you still need to know how to shoot and and you should have an excellent idea still the idea reigns brother you can't google ideas you can copy ideas 
but god gives you ideas uniqueness of the idea comes from our creator god you ask him he'll give you wisdom james says and he'll give you ideas also so that's what brother uh, there's a great need you're right there's a great need for audio visual content we don't have content for children we only dub foreign content we don't make good films there is no good christian films uh, we hear about you know war room fireproof all these great films but people want to make films but they don't have the resources and means so we need to pray the lord may help uh, because this is a great medium where eye and ear is involved audio and visual and as retention is the best through audio visual and we could uh, uh, dub it and we can take it to many places and the media is the one that can take it to the last mile where the gospel will be preached to the ends of the world and that's the media media no evangelist and missionary jim elliot did his part we thank the lord for that but media is going to where even missionaries can't go especially in the middle east there are many women behind the burqa sitting in small bedrooms they are giving their lives and reading bible through the social media I mean, I mean, I remember just to share here uh, when I went to the Bonsi Jail, the Gurgaon Jail, with the gospel. The first time we went, we just took the Jesus film, and and we just showed the Jesus film. Five hundred people were watching, and they spent two hours just sitting quietly doing nothing else. And and the jailer said, "Please come back again. We haven't seen a time when the when the people are all not fighting and sitting quietly watching the movie." uh so um i always uh, have this dream that we must have a gospel film festival in india when will that be brother uh brother this dream is going on since 2010 when i went to the world congress of evangelizing in uh, cape town lausanne and there i met a christian uh, group that did a film festival and we we uh, want to bring the best films to india to show to the people to inspire young people and obviously for evangelism also because people will love to come and see a movie at least uh, but it couldn't happen till now so please pray um, that we could get the best there's never a christian film festival ever happened in india of of an international level so we could bring the best christian cinema uh, powerful films powerful stories to share the gospel and i'm sure many non christians will come and just to add to that jesus film thing brother i met a person called joe class who came to india because campus crusade headquarters sent him here to a village and you know what they got a report from the village that the, there was a team that went i forget the name of the village i'll look it up uh, uh, they showed the jesus film and the team went away and then it was reported they saw the same man with the beard and long hair doing some helping people in the village and he disappeared and uh, and it's it's no joke so the campus crusade usa they said we won't believe in these fables you know so they sent a team to that village to confirm whether this story is true and it was true they saw a mysterious man coming healing people doing things and used to go away beyond the mountains and and they said that he looked just like this man in the film they were very poor it was an unreached people group uh, a lot of them were illiterate but what i'm saying is god can do wonders and they 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 went and researched and found out that that story was real that person used to come and do uh, great things so um, so god can use anything yeah thank you thank you so much yeah i encourage other people also to come forward i think we have some people who are uh, at a hagai seminar for the first time maybe so i see some new names so i have maybe a friend could... his name is jayant uh, jayant is here so um, he's joining us from delhi so he was kind enough to join us and i'm sure he's a sindhi person who gave his life to the lord jesus christ and his life changed 
and uh, he's also in the corporate world so so that's our friend jayant uh, mulchandani he is here oh wonderful wonderful okay uh, praise the lord uh, everyone uh, thank you uh, alfred brother uh, thanks for uh, you know sharing uh, uh, the link uh, to the zoom meeting uh, uh, me and my wife uh, we, we spend the last uh, 45 minutes or 1 hour uh listening to hagai and you know the ministry and uh to your message it was i think it was a blessing for all of us uh and it was nice to hear uh, everybody uh one second i'll just try to put my video on yeah i'm actually in between things yeah yeah hi that's me uh that's my wife okay <laughs> yeah so yeah uh, so i think it was a good uh, experience for all of us uh, thanks uh, uh, alfred brother uh, once again for introducing uh, this and i think i look forward to uh, uh, listening uh, to another uh, ministry of agai thank you thank you so much for joining thank you for joining thank you thank you brother we have some people from bangalore and also chennai i think uh, so mm. yes my friend wasn't is here so maybe just a few words good evening uh, uh, brothers here in the hagai alumni uh, meeting um, i i saw the um zoom meeting uh, announcement on isaac's mobile screen and i uh, had the time to log in and attend this uh, thank you uh, for uh, uh, sharing um, god's word uh, uh, with uh, with with so much of uh, um, emphasis uh, in uh, in the deeds um that that will that will qualify our faith thank you thank you brother alfred and uh, all all at this uh, zoom meeting and ashok is his elder brother yeah good evening it was uh, very nice to listen to uh, brother alfred uh, allen uh, it was very inspiring very motivating and uh, it was a great pleasure to listen and uh, learn a little bit more about this uh, uh, wonderful simple lady or character of uh, uh, dorcas this uh, dorcas uh, we also uh, take this opportunity to thank and renew our friendship with uh, dr rebecca vedamanikam uh, who motivated us a great deal to join the hagai uh, group as such <laughs> thank you very much for enabling us to watch this uh, wonderful inspiring and motivating uh, talk uh, this evening. thanks a lot thank you for joining thank you alfred it was uh, so nice to see you and it was a good uh, <clears throat> reminder of how we used to spend time together Uh, during our movie days uh, preparing for short skits and you always used to come out with uh, great ideas uh, and uh, choreographing the skits and uh, so it was very good uh, listening to you again and uh, as i told in the beginning uh, brother alfred is married to sister rebecca rebecca's parents live in navi mumbai in washi so once when he came to navi mumbai we met there so he has a navi mumbai connection so uh, god bless you brother uh, we we thank hope you, to meet you again huh? thank you brother thank you thank you so anyone else uh, brother very Rajan? nice to very nice very beautiful way you presented all the thing you know you know helping us to remember you know when we Uh, all the you know abbreviations so it was very good and also took us through the story in a very beautiful way 
how we need to be inspiring, how we need to be useful and fruitful. Uh, it was a great thing. So very uh, inspiring actually. Yeah, very nice. So Thank nice, you, nicely presented. <laughs> so beautifully presented, well presented. Nice. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Good. So if there is no other uh, question or suggestion or uh, word of appreciation, uh, now I will uh, request uh, Brother Benjamin uh, to express the word of thanks. Over to Brother Benjamin. Thank you, Brother. I take this privilege uh, to thank Brother Alfred Allen on behalf of every participant. Thank you, Brother, for the wonderful message you brought uh, about uh, from the Bible about the character Dorcas. I mean, truly, uh, faith without works is dead. So beautifully, you know, uh, brought forward to us. Uh, we thank every participant uh, to attending this meeting, this evening meeting, taking, taking out the time out on the Saturday evening, this monthly meeting of Haggai Ministry. I thank Dr. Uh, Brother Anil Matthew, Brother Rajan Matthew, Brother Isaac, and everyone. Brother Murli, thank you. Over to Brother Murli for the final closing prayer. Dr. Becky, yeah. Yeah, Doctor, uh, over to Dr. Becky for uh, the final closing prayer. Let's bow our heads in prayer before the Lord. Father God, we just thank you and we praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank you that we can come to you at any time and we can worship you. Father, we thank you for this Navi Bombay group. Thank you for the leadership and thank you, Lord, for the way they conduct these programs, giving you all the glory. Father, today I just pray that each of us would be a Dorcas, that we would look to the felt needs of the people. We would obey the greatest commandment which you have given us, which is to love people. Because if we love you, we have to love people. Father, let us be that needle that doesn't take credit at all, but people will see the garments that have been stitched, the things that have been done in your name, so that the glory will always go to you, Lord, that we decrease, but you increase. Master, we just pray that the, that the light that is in us will shine so brightly that people will see the good works and glorify our Father who's in heaven. Father, we commit each one of us today and we pray, Lord, that even as we learned about Dorcas, let us be that needle, Lord, that keeps doing good for people so that people will remember that it is you who taught us to do good, you who healed the lame, the blind, you who healed people and you who provided food for the hungry. Father, always let us walk in your footsteps because you have shown us where to go. We commit each one into your hand and we especially commit Alfred, Rebecca and the girls into your hands. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Over to Brother Isaac. Thank you so much. Uh, once again, um, I think uh, this is a very blessed time, and I thank. I want to thank the Lord that every every month we meet, we receive something of God's overflow to us. I mean, He's always overflowing, and we catch whatever He has through His servants, and we are really uh, grateful for that wonderful, uh, everlasting, everlasting joy which we get when we are together. So please do share about this to your friends and this will be, uh, you know, the video will be shared and uh, kindly also you can uh, invite more and more people. We'll meet again next month, February 27th, by the grace of God. Thank you once again. Brother Alfred, I will just want to, I'll call you a little later and then we can have just a small conversation. Yeah. Sure, sure. Is it about a film you made? Uh, a few things. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. It's been a real privilege and honor to be with uh, the uh, 
we are hagai friends and uh, also such a joy to meet all of you and to once again see the beaming smile of dr rebecca after a long time <laughs> and god bless you and so happy to see uh, brother anil and all i could say is his clock has stopped he looks just the same as he looked 5 years back <laughs> <laughs> yes uh, he is carrying a big burden now i know i know yes and god bless you all as such a joy to when i heard navi mumbai obviously as anil said i said wow i mean there is a there's a group there also of the hey guy i was quite amazed and uh, it's very nice and i hope others will also join in in the days to come and uh, we praise god for that thank you so much thank yes. you it's been thank, you, thank you thank you thank you dr becky thank for you. joining thank, thank you doctor thank you bless you thank you thank you anil bye bye thank you thank you everyone for joining thank you thank you bye thank you bye bye, bye. good night thank, thank you good night bye bye thank you bye good night all of you thanks